6.30 a.m. and we are at the rice terraces in food. We just drove here, it's, like a, it's probably like a 15 or 20 minute drive from our Airbnb where we're staying. And we will try to see if we can head down. Technically they don't open until 8, at least the ones that we were looking at, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and keep going. No, it's okay. You can. So this was the Tagalalang rice terraces. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh, quick little cinematic sequence of these. Super pretty here. The grass wasn't super like tall or anything, but I think it's just the season we came in. It's still rainy season here and early in the year. And I think maybe if you come more during summer or fall that the rice is longer. But what do I know? I'm not a rice farmer. Well, now we're gonna go. I guess get some breakfast and then head over to what I'm excited for. So we're here at Bali Pulina right now, which is one of the most well-known coffee plantations, or should I say Kopi Luwak plantations in Indonesia. Uh, Kopi Luwak is a type of coffee where they feed the beans to the civets and then after the digestion period they harvest the beans and make coffee. We'll cook this right here for about 45 minutes. I think I'm lying. <laughs> We're gonna watch Andrew, make, Andrew and work for free. Yeah, this is normal for me. Um, Cause I'm a steward of society, but. I need a and then, course yeah. grinds. And you need a course for French press? Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> French press, so. Gotcha. Slaving away. I've been doing this for a couple of years now, so I've kind of gotten used to it. But, uh, this one is the final product. Really? This? Yeah. I think one is the full coffee. Sounds for espresso. Uh, yeah. A little finer. finer. You can drink coffee. Like uh, you can drink coffee. Uh, okay. Finer here? Yeah. I'm, I don't Can we put coffee. it back in? Oh, yeah. But he does. Oh, yeah, in Donner we have the tea, we have chocolate. Oh, hot chocolate? Oh, I yes, love hot chocolate. Yes, hot chocolate we have. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I love hot chocolate. I love hot Found chocolate. It. <laughs> Black pepper, yeah. Ginger? Ginger? Vanilla? Oh. Black pepper? Peppercorn. Yeah. Cinnamon. Oh, Cinnamon here. Good. Some ginger. It smells like ginger. I hear you. Let's go. <laughs> this one is uh, from the palm. They use these to collect the palm. Do you palm, like that? yes. It's me. <laughs> collect the rice and they work in the rice fields. <laughs> 
They showed us all the like different kinds of spices that they make here. I guess the whole entire process of getting the rice done, different spices, how they grind it, how they use their traditional tools, and honestly, pretty cool stuff. How they're they're still doing stuff kind of the traditional way here, um, using some old school tools and like just pounding stuff, you know, rather than sending it through a giant manufacturing process. We're about to go taste it, which is what I am so excited for. Get me some of this Kopi Luwak, some of this good old poop coffee, good old uh, roasted civet. everything except the Kopi Luwak right now. This is a free tester that comes with the free admission. So definitely recommend coming here because you get a lot of stuff for nothing. Uh, they've got all these different types of teas as well as a few different types of coffee. And on the side I ordered a, a black rice, like a sweet black rice with some coconut milk. And uh, just waiting for the Kopi Luwak right now. All right, we're about to try the Kopi Luwak coffee here. So this is literally made from like the excrement from the civets. <laughs> they feed the beans to it and they went through the whole process. So we'll see how it tastes. Wow. I'll tell you, it doesn't taste like poop. So that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a good thing right there. It's really good, wow. It's kind of like chocolatey, which <laughs> it kind of has like a chocolatey aftertaste to it, and it's not as like fruity as some of these like it's like a lot of Indonesia, well like Starbucks coffee, but like stuff from like Thailand and, and Indonesia is traditionally very like kind of fruity flavored. This is more dark and chocolatey and a little bit more bold, let's say. And, and, uh, yeah. You probably won't like it at all. It's one of the temples here in Ubud. I'm gonna try to figure out how, I'm wearing shorts, so I think we need to get some of these, um, I don't know what they're called. Basically like pieces of cloth that you kind of wrap around your waist and then wear as like a skirt. It's a traditional thing to cover up because it's more respectful that way. Thank you. Always looking fresh in our salons. But we have a big trinity, we call it Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Brahma for creator, Vishnu protector, and Shiva destroyed or recycling. Hmm. That is the temple in Balinese. But here you come to Gunung Kawi Sabatu. This temple is belong by the Vishnu. Because for the three gods, they have a symbol like Brahma, they have a symbol fire. Vishnu, they have a symbol water. And Shiva, they have a symbol wind. Okay. That is the three things we can make life on this road. This Board here. Yeah. That here, that is why a lot of people they come here to doing the purification on that area over there. Mm -hmm. The pools. The pool. They come to asking a blessing. Because in Balinese or in Hindu religion, we believe we born to this world here, we just come to uh, make our life is more better. Mm -hmm. Because we born here we have a, like a, a, all the bad things like a greedy mm -hmm. stalling or something like that one yeah. to make it cooling down to understanding who you are exactly. Yes. That is the thing. Why the people a lot of they doing the meditation to thinking what they can do with the more best things. Mm. And also for doing the purification on this area, you can buy the offerings. Get the offerings and then with the offering you put on the front of the place or in that place and then mm -hmm. you asking a wish what you want to do for the verification mm. that is my awesome thank you <laughs> we would later find out this man's name was gusti although every time he mentioned it he would say like gustav he seemed to take a liking to us and asked how we were spending the rest of our afternoon and to be honest we had no idea typically you should be cautious when people offer to guide or assist you because they typically just want and expect your money. However, Gusti was different. He told us how he mainly worked in his own rice fields, typically for 12 to 14 hours a day, and when he wasn't working there, he was tending to some of the surrounding temples. 
He loved that job specifically because it gave him an opportunity to meet and talk to people from all over the world. He was truly extroverted and a kind soul. We spent the next several hours following him all around the outskirts of Ubud, on roads we didn't even know were roads, and in places where we would have never ventured on our own. We told him about how our morning experience at the Tagalang rice terraces was not quite what we were expecting, and that it was crowded with tourists, but in light of that, he decided to take us to his own rice fields, where there were no tourists, and we could enjoy the peace. I learned more about the culture and the true lifestyles of the Balinese people from Gusti more than any TripAdvisor article. While we may consider the people here to be in poverty, and it is definitely true, the kindness and happiness even in their situations was incredibly moving. Do be careful, as many people will often try to take advantage of your wealth and naivety. However, I hope you get an opportunity to meet someone like Gusti. And yes, everything in this video did happen in one busy full day. Thanks for watching guys.